Good afternoon. I am Todd Cunningham. I'm with Tulsa Professionals for the Arts. It's a group of us who work in the arts. We all work in nonprofit arts organizations in one way or another. Um, and we're here today to tell you and explain why we think that the council should consider dedicating a small portion of the vision funds to supporting local nonprofit arts organizations. Across the nation, at both the state and federal level, funding for the arts has been on a steady decline since the 1980s. That has caused local governments to have to find creative ways to help sustain organizations that provide such an important role in defining their community's culture, educational, and economic environment. In fiscal year 2014, $1.23 billion in public funding was appropriated to the arts. Of that, local municipalities provided 63%, while state governments accounted for 25%, and the federal government only 12 percent. When governments reduce their support for the arts, they're not cutting frills, rather they're undercutting an industry that is a cornerstone of tourism, economic development, and revitalization of many downtowns. And when governments increase their support for the arts, they are generating tax revenue, jobs, and a creativity-based economy. The arts help communities to prosper. They're part of a well-diversified 21st century economy. In fact, according to the U.S. Census, in 2011, the value of arts and cultural production in America was $504 billion, or nearly 3.2% of gross domestic product. For context of that, consider that the estimated value of U.S. travel and tourism in that same year was only 2.8% of gross domestic product. The arts put people to work. By investing in the arts, the public sector is fostering a skilled workforce of creative occupations. Um, including artists, managers, marketers, technicians, teachers, designers, carpenters, and wor workers in a wide variety of other professions. The arts attract tourism revenue. Cultural tourism is a huge market, comprising of 129.6 million cultural travelers and $171 billion each year to the U.S. economy. Originally, I talked about that 63%. That was $770 million, $777 million invested in 2014 by local governments. So obviously they're realizing the benefits of investing in the arts and that this practice helps their communities to prosper, puts people to work, and attracts tourism. Hotel motel taxes are the most popular form of local option taxes used to fund targeted tourists. Here's a, here's a list of just some of the cities that have now allocated large amounts of money to local arts organizations directly from the hotel motel tax. Houston City Council recently passed uh, the budget which calls for 85 million dollars to be spent on the arts alone over the next five years going directly to organizations of the seven percent of the hotel occupancy tax 1.3 percent of that goes to the arts in the most recent fiscal year arts groups received 14 million dollars in, in Houston from just the hotel occupancy tax Columbus Ohio the hotel motel bed tax generated five million dollars to local nonprofits groups other forms of sales tax exist. Some communities earmark already existing sales taxes for the arts. These are not new taxes, rather they are current taxes. An example of this is seen in Broward County, Florida, where the county collects $2.3 million annually just for the arts. The Huffington Post published a survey by Vocative that determined that the 10 best cities to live in if you're under 35. Of course, this is the key demographic everybody's talking about all the time and the one we're all trying to attract to our, to our communities. Of those top 10 cities, pretty much all of them provide public funding for the arts. And I've listed them here. We'll go through them quickly. Uh, New York, 156 million, which is obviously not possible here, but it's a great thing. San Francisco, $10 million comes directly just from their hotel motel tax. Denver metropolitan counties, a lot of counties have gotten together in the Denver region and voted in a 1% sales tax, creates $47 million a year for the arts institutions in the Denver area. Um, Austin has recently implemented a hotel motel tax. They give $850,000 a year to um, the arts organizations. Seattle does a combination of general funds, admission tax revenues, municipal arts funds at $7 million. And then Portland, finally, the city that so many from Tulsa went to visit to see what they were doing right, one of the things that they did, and again, I wouldn't ask you all to do this because we'd probably all be out of a job, um, is that they tax everyone in the city over the age of 18 a $35 annual tax to support the arts. Just last year that raised $8 million, $8.5 million for the arts and arts education in Portland. Currently in Tulsa, the income from the PAC to the city um, is about $1.5 million. Expenses are $2 million. I put this up here to show um, that this is more of a reactive response to funding the arts in Tulsa and funding more, not the arts so much as funding a, a facility 
um, but it is something that is being done. This is reactive. What we're proposing is something more proactive. What we're asking you for today is to consider supporting local arts groups. We've identified already 35 local nonprofit organizations that have maintained their 501c3 status for at least three years. Um, as we have shown, this is a trend in cities Tulsa often hopes to emulate and tries to emulate. It's also a trend in the cities that are attracting the millennials. Unlike what is happening in those other cities, we are requesting a very modest start. For every $100,000 that might be appropriated from vision funds, there will be a total industry impact of about $200,000. Five and a, 5.8 full-time equivalent jobs will be created, and $135,000 will be contributed to local household incomes, and $8,723 in local government revenue will be generated. If just, one per, if just 0 0.01 of the 0.6% vision funds were to be reinvested in our local arts organization, which would total approximately about $300,000, there would be a total industry impact of almost $600,000, 17.3 full-time jobs would be created, and $26,169 in local government revenue would be generated. Beyond the direct economic impact, this modest investment represents a giant step forward with enormous implications is a great selling tool to both retain and attract businesses and individuals. It also helps our current citizens and voters have a real buy-in to our local arts and add to a sense of community pride. Finally, in closing, we believe this proposal manages to check off most of the boxes you provided of criteria. You asked that earlier, Councilman Ewing, of, of <coughs> the PAC. We believe that this does all of those things, unleash the creative potential of Tulsans. There's no, weather, no better way to do that than direct support to 35 arts or organizations. Enhance the quality of life, as shown, most attractive cities are providing direct support to the arts. Diffusion of retail activity on the internet, you cannot buy tickets to the local arts and entertainment on Amazon. Um, support public education, most all of these 35 local nonprofits have education and outreach programs. Um, to move the needle forward, this is a great first step and something that hasn't been done in Tulsa before. And um, seeking to invest in unique Tulsa assets and treasures. Of these 35 local arts groups, one example I'll give is the Opera. They've been here for almost 70 years. They're the only opera company in Oklahoma um, and certainly a treasure that we want to be able to maintain. Thank you very much.